this is without a doubt a challenge for everyone. Uh, not only because it's competitive even when there was unlimited or seemingly unlimited shelf space, but if we think about how the brick and mortar landscape has changed in the publishing marketplace in the last 10 to 15 years, it's night and day from what it was for many, many years before that. So just in the States alone, we had Borders, we had Walden Books, we had many, many more Barnes and Noble locations. Uh, there, there are so many bookstores and, and mom and pop, small neighborhood bookstores, but even the big chains, it, we had, we used to have a lot of big bookstores around. There was a lot of shelf space and the public libraries, you know, budget and funding and even those are suffering. So it's difficult. And if you're seeing it as a challenge, the reason I mention this is not to be disheartening or discouraging. I want you to know that you're not alone, that it is challenging. And it's not necessarily any reflection on you or your book. It's a reflection on simply, we have a lot fewer shelves. There aren't as many brick and mortar stores. They're smaller. They have to be very selective about what they take on. And unfortunately, there has been a learning curve. And I think we're still in a phase of a learning curve to an extent of booksellers embracing and being willing to accept titles from the indie publishing marketplace. When you talk about being a buyer for any retail environment, you want a safe bet. You want something that you feel is going to sell without any problem. You're not going to have to go through the process of returns. We all know returns is another part of this topic that's not fun for anybody. So some people have that in place, some people don't. Whenever you're a risk, it's more difficult for any store manager to say, sure, we'll take up six inches of space to feature three copies of your book versus a book coming out of one of the major houses or something that's been vetted by the industry. And that, without question, has been an uphill battle. But it is changing. It is. And booksellers are in this marketplace and they read the magazines and they read the reviews and they subscribe and they see, at least the good ones, are recognizing that indie titles are rising and independent publishing is not what it was at the beginning. Self-published authors are educating themselves. They're learning on programs like this or hiring people and professionals to help with the process so that the independently published titles are of very good quality, in some cases better than what the houses are turning out. And I was a judge on one of the industry programs and contests for years. And I've also read you know, countless titles out of the major houses. And I can tell you that there are plenty of errors in books that come out of the big houses, and there are plenty of independent or self-published titles that are stellar and flawless. So I think that it does make a difference that people are recognizing now that self-published and independently published titles are worthy of that shelf space. They're worthy of the brick and mortar presence. So in terms of how you get in, uh, Without question, local author, I think that always earns some points. So do a search on Yelp, do a search in the yellow pages, find all the small independent bookstores in your area within a half hour radius of you. Right now, of course, with COVID, not so many of us are going out, popping in and visiting, but you can always pick up the phone. And when things are better, hopefully in a few months, I always recommend set aside a Saturday morning once a month, take a couple of hours, pick a few stores, pop in, just pop in with a copy of your book. Say, I'm a local author, this is my book. If you're able to get reviews first, absolutely get reviews. When you can walk in and say, here's what people are saying about my book, and I'm a local author, and I was wondering if you'd consider it. Usually what can happen is, if you'll leave them a copy, at least maybe they'll be curious and they'll read it. If they like it, they'll see if, if it goes. If they sell the first one, they'll order more and buy the rest. That's my, you know, my understanding. I know that many people would love to have their book at Walmart and Target and on the bookshelves of those major stores. I'm certainly not knocking the opportunity if you have an in or some way to get, you know, that kind of arrangement to happen. But in my experience, the people on site at the stores are not the ones who make the buying decisions. Those are corporate decisions. Same really with Barnes & Noble. Unless there happens to be a manager on site, um, it's not easy to get into the major chains by just popping in. The smaller independent booksellers are your best bet where you're dealing with the manager or even the owner 
and they can make a buying decision. And hopefully the fact that you're a local author, that's where you begin. If they're selling and it's doing well and you're getting reviews over time, we don't want each of these efforts to be isolated over time if you build momentum where your social media following picks up and you get into a few stores and you're gathering some reviews and maybe you enter a couple of contests and you win a couple of awards. Each thing that you can add to your portfolio, to your list of credibility, that's what helps you pitch the next thing. And you can approach the next people by saying, my book is doing extremely well and I would love to see it do well with you also. And hopefully that gets you started on a path that keeps going from there.